Hey everyone, Mr. Schachter here with Limits Involving Infinity Part 3. We're going to use end behavior models to calculate infinite limits. So we're going to learn about what an end behavior model is and how it's useful. So here's the underlying concept between end behavior model. Let's say you're really hungry, your friends have some Dunkin' Donut munchkins for you, you're excited, you're starving, you're so hungry, you just need to eat some food. Here are your friends. You've got three friends. You've got Gohan, who's got six munchkins to offer. Vegeta's got 30 munchkins to offer. And Goku... Now, Goku's got 9,001 munchkins to offer. Now, if you're really, really hungry, notice that the 6 and the 30 just become insignificant when compared to the 9,001. That's like, that's like not even the appetizer, right? It, it doesn't even come close to 9,001 munchkins. So all that really matters, all we really need to look at is the 9,001 munchkins. And the same thing goes for polynomials. Oh, what's that? The same thing goes for polynomials. As so we're talking about a polynomial expression, you know, 3x to the 4th plus 2x cubed minus 9x squared minus 2x, it's really the highest degree that, that makes the difference. The, when we're talking about numbers as large as infinity, the cube, the square, and the linear don't grow nearly as fast as the cortic. The cortic blows the other ones out of the water. So an end behavior model is basically like the highest degree. So let's take a look at an example and why this is useful. Suppose we have this function f of x, and it's it's very, very large rational function. 2x to the 5th, x to the 4th, x to the 2nd, blah, 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 all this stuff. Well, it turns out that when we're talking about an infinite limit, okay, only the higher degrees matter. Everything else doesn't matter. And again, this is only for infinity or negative infinity we're talking about. So we say an end behavior model of that rational function is 2x to the 5th over 3x squared which could simplify uh, x to the second on top and bottom, giving you 2x to the third over 3. This is an end behavior model for this crazy rational function. What that means is they share the same end behavior. When we're talking about infinity and negative infinity, they do the same thing. This is a nice, easy cubic function. It has a positive leading coefficient. And therefore, if it has a positive leading coefficient and it's cubic, which means it's odd, as we approach infinity, this thing is going to infinity. And as we approach negative infinity, this thing is going down to negative infinity. So an end behavior model is a way to kind of tell the end behavior of a very, very complex function by thinking about merely its highest degrees. Let's look at uh, B this time. Highest degree, highest degree, doesn't matter anymore. So the G of X end behavior model is 2x cubed over 5x cubed, which simplifies to the constant 2 fifths. And since this is a constant, it's always equal to 2 fifths. We know that at positive infinity, it's equal to 2 fifths. And at negative infinity, it's equal to 2 fifths. I have no idea what these two very complicated functions are doing in the middle of negative infinity and infinity. They could, be, they could be wacky, crazy, crazy, I don't know about that, but pretty crazy functions. But what I do know is they share the same end behavior as their end behavior models. Here's the definition of the difference between a right and a left end behavior model. Um, the function g, so we're talking specifically at relating g now, is a right end behavior model for the function f. If the limit as x approaches infinity of f over g is equal to 1. So f is on top here g is on the bottom. And it's simply a left end behavior model. So g is a left end behavior model for f if, uh, if the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f over g is equal to 1. So again, g is going to be our end behavior model, and f is our original function that we're comparing it to. Let's take a look at this problem. It says, let f of x be x plus e to the negative x. We're going to first show that uh, g of x equals x is a right end behavior model. And we're going to also then show that h of x equals e to the negative x is a left end behavior model. Let's start by showing um, the right end behavior model. So right end behavior model, the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x over g of x is equal to 1, uh, where g of x is the right end behavior model. And f of x is the original function. So let's go ahead and plug in. So limit as x approaches infinity of f of x, which is x plus e to the negative x, uh, over g of x, which is x. And we basically need to prove this is 1. Let's give it a try. So the limit as x approaches infinity of, uh, let's split this up, x over x plus the limit 
as x approaches infinity of e to the negative x over x. Um, this is really simple, right? Let's get a nice uh, thing here. This is really easy. This is 1 over 1. So this is really just the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over 1, which is just 1, of course. It's just 1, right? Just get these equal signs in here. It's just 1. And this one's a little harder. This one over here is a bit harder. Uh, it's the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the negative x over x. Well, what we can assume is that uh, we're plugging in our infinity here, which is basically a really, really, really big number, okay? And a really, really big number plugged into the numerator is e, the numerator is e to the negative x. And if you plug a really big number in here, that's basically going to get really, 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 really close to zero, right? It's going to get close to zero because there's a horizontal asymptote for e to the negative x is zero. And the denominator is just going to basically kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger. But since that numerator is close to zero, that thing is just going to approach zero and eventually equal zero as we get closer and closer and closer. So the final answer is one, which proves that we have a right end behavior model, uh, this proof right here. All right, let's try the other one. So let's get rid of all this. Uh, let's just do this. Let's get rid of all this stuff. And now let's prove left end behavior model. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity of um, g of x, or let's do f of, f of x, f of x over g of x equals to 1. This proves right end behavior model. This definitely doesn't. It proves left end behavior model. And um, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is going to be x plus e to the negative x over g of x is, or we're going to use uh, this one right here, e to the negative x. And we're trying to show this is 1. Let's split it again. Limit as x approaches negative infinity of x over e to the negative x plus the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the negative x over e to the negative x. Well, this one's easy. e to the negative x over e to the negative x is 1. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 is 1. Done. This one's a little harder. We've got the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x over e to the negative x, okay? Now, this is really interesting because the numerator is getting uh, very, very big. We're plugging infinity in. It's getting huge. It's getting super big. However, this denominator is getting bigger faster, okay? Now, what's happening here is this is a negative exponential function, which means that towards the left, this thing literally looks like this. This is the graph of e to the negative x, right? So as we get towards negative infinity, this thing is blowing up faster. Now, even though you, know, you can't really say that one infinity is bigger than the other, this, this e to the negative x is growing so much faster that the linear doesn't even come close. So in regards to who's bigger, this numerator is, is not even close. This guy is like tiny compared to this huge, really fast growing function. So this actually approaches zero because the linear can't keep up. This is kind of like our end behavior model, right? This is kind of like the linear disappearing altogether in the end behavior model becoming one over e to the negative x because the linear uh, just can't compete with the exponential. So the final answer is well, zero plus one is one, of course, which successfully proves that we have a, um, a end behavior model here that uh, e to the negative x is a left end behavior model for the function f. Something exciting to leave you with in regards to function values versus limit values as we close the section.